God's grace, his mercy, and his peace be with all of you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. It was so tempting to preach on the gospel lesson and the Ephesians reading for this morning, and I have to comment on it briefly, because not only in the gospel reading does Jesus remind us that it's not from our own hearts that we come to salvation, but it's from Jesus Christ who comes from outside of us. So that when we take a look at our own hearts, as much as we like to look and think that there's always good things that are there, there the reality is, is that we struggle with sin. And that sin runs deeper than just the surface of what we find there. And in order to get saved from that, we need someone to help us from outside of us, which is exactly what Jesus came to do. And then when we combine it with the reading from Ephesians, the way that Paul talks about putting on the whole armor of God, I couldn't help but just imagine we watched... Iron Man 3 just the other day. It was on TV. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. But Iron Man, it's a superhero where he has this iron outfit that he has where he can fly and do all kinds of things like this. And along the way, in these movies, he sort of develops newer and newer suits so that he's got some where it'll come and flying at him in bits and pieces and go and land on him so that his hands show up first, his legs show up, then his breastplate and all of these sorts of things. And as we listen to all of the things that Paul is encouraging in this passage, it couldn't help have that image in mind. We think about that in relationship to Paul's bigger teaching about baptism, though, is that all of these come from the gospel of peace. All of them come from our Savior, Jesus Christ, as a gift. So that as we listen to God's word, as we come for the waters of baptism, we become, as Paul writes, clothed in Christ, his righteousness, his peace, the strength of his word given to us into our hands and into our mouths in order not only to help us to grow, but also to be able to speak against the devil as we did in our first hymn where we had that one verse where we told the devil, you know what, it doesn't matter what you have in store for me, I'm baptized into Christ. So that everything which Jesus has accomplished in his life, his dying on the cross, his rising from the dead, is applied to us one by one. And we become part of the people of God the way that the scriptures write. Because of that, for today, I couldn't help but turn to a reading from Acts chapter 2. I want you to listen this is on Pentecost Day, that day when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the disciples. And as they went out and preached to all of the crowds that were gathered from all the different nations of the known world that had come on this pilgrimage to Jerusalem to offer their prayers there at the temple. The Holy Spirit sent the disciples out to preach this message and tell them about this Jesus who had just died 50 days before and was raised from the dead. Brothers, Peter said, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children, for all who are far off and for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 
we hear those words. It's one of those things that we often take for granted in our Christian life. And as we take a look at the way in which our society often takes a look at what the church does and say, well, it's just a small little thing, and it's just a little bit of water and some words, and, well, what all does it mean? St. Peter here on the day of Pentecost, speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit, unfolds the fullness of what is there for us to hear and consider even today. So that as the way Luke writes in the book of Acts, the church grew by the word of the Lord spreading and growing within our hearts. The Holy Spirit is given there. And as people heard that word and were convicted of their sins, those words were spoken by Peter where he says, Repent, return to God, and be baptized, every one of you. And here is what you will receive, he says. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will receive the forgiveness of your sins. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the promise is for you and for your children. And not only for the ones that are gathered here right in front of us. So for Peter, that was the ones in the city of Jerusalem. But we can say here today, not only for us here at St. James Lutheran Church, gathered this Sunday morning as, was, as is our custom, to worship the Lord and to receive his gifts, but for all whom the Lord our God will call even the ones that are far off. Right from the beginning of the church, the word was preached. Baptism was used as the way to grow the church. And that's what we see throughout the book of Acts as we hear stories about whole families being baptized, entire households. And today we celebrated that. And yes, I know, Prabh George, you were baptized already before, and so was Varjinder. But today, it's a small reflection of that within our own lives here within the church today. So that we learn and we reflect upon the simple reality that as it was back then, in the same way, the Holy Spirit grows the church through the same means. Through the word, through the water, to make us part of the community of the church so that we grow with the strength of the Holy Spirit who is given to us. The Holy Spirit continues to call out to us today through that very same word to direct us to our Savior Jesus Christ day by day. And that's something that we often overlook in our lives. Part of the reason is, is because we don't think of baptism in the same way that the scripture unfolds it. Quite often we think of baptism as something that happened so far ago and so long ago in our history that we sort of scratch our heads and wonder, well, what use is it for me today? But as we're reminded, not only in the book of Acts, but then also in Peter's writings and in Paul's writings, and in the same way that John speaks about our relationship through Christ, through the water, and through the blood, it reminds us that it is a living reality for us even today. So that whether we've just been baptized whether we were baptized many years ago, we have been made members of the body of Christ. Or the way that Paul writes, we have been clothed with Jesus Christ so that our lives are hidden with Christ in God. Or the way that he writes in another place where he talks about it's this renewing, this justification that we receive before God so that all of our sins are covered over by Jesus' righteousness. Not so that we can sin all the more that grace can abound, it's a mistake, he says, because the Holy Spirit is also given at the same time in order to teach us, to lead us, and to help us to grow, so that through the Word we learn to conform not only our minds and our lives to the fullness of what Jesus has already done, but so that we can become witnesses to the same Jesus as we carry him in our lives to the people all around. All of these things are the reality of who we have become through the waters of baptism. So that joined with him there, we are now members, as he says, of the body of Christ. And the way Paul writes in another place, that Christ works mightily within us. Or the way he describes in his letters to the Corinthians that we've become these clay pots. Imperfect as we are, that carry this immeasurable riches of the gospel temples of God and temples of the Holy Spirit into every corner of the world where we live our day-to-day -day lives. 
So whether it's working over at the Tim Hortons or going to school or whether it's painting or whether it is, you know, we can go down the whole list, working in a government office or whatever it might be, shuttling people back and forth between different locations. We have been filled with that gift of the Holy Spirit in order to show the love of Christ in every place where we are. that as we consider what it is the Lord is doing in our lives, well, faith is always busy and active. That's what Luther said too. Faith is always busy and active. It doesn't sit idly by in order to say, oh, well, that's been done. Well, it's true. Everything necessary for our salvation has been accomplished. That's the gift that comes to us in Jesus Christ. But beyond that, same Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together with his Holy Spirit, has drawn us to become members of his church, temples of God, so that we continue to grow in the way that we live that love, that service to the people all around us. So as it was then, so it is now today. The church grows through the same, very same means, through the word through the waters of baptism. And yes, I could go on to the Lord's Supper as well as the place where Jesus gives himself for our life in order to renew that gift of baptism time and time again within our lives. But it's a reminder for us also so that as we look at our lives day by day, beginning as we're invited to do in Luther's instructions about prayer where we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit every morning and then close the day off in the same way that this is the name in which we've been baptized, clothed in Christ, so that our lives are in his and his is in us. So that as we reflect upon the reality of Jesus' crucifixion for you and for me, that we confess our sins, die to sin, in order to be raised to that newness of life each step along the way. Why? Well, as we're reminded in our gospel reading, we stumble all along. Each day we sin, but reflecting on that goodness which has been given to us, we're raised to new life because of what our Savior Christ has done. Where we are washed in that washing of regeneration, that's what baptism means in the original language, is to wash. We're washed clean. As we heard and prayed in our intro text today as well, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And then that beautiful prayer, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And then cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. In baptism, God has done that in our lives. And that gift is for you. So that as we reflect each and every day on what our Savior has done, who we've been called to be, what that means for how we live, it's a reminder that you have been joined to the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we've been joined to him like branches grafted into a vine so that we receive life from our Savior day by day. And through us, the Lord continues to do his work of reaching out to the world to bear that good fruit, those works that have been prepared before for us, all because of what our Lord is working here in our lives this, we give thanks. We open our ears, we open our hearts to hear his word, not only to learn and fill our heads, but to discover what it is that the Lord is doing for you and through us today. May the peace of our Lord strengthen us in that faith. May he continue to bless us in that gift day by day so that we grow in our awareness of that gift also learn to live it more fully as we reach out with that love of Christ. Amen. Let's...
Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you on this day for all of your blessings which are new every morning and especially for this gift of three new baptisms, three new members joined to you through Jesus Christ in the water and the word. Continue to bless our own lives so that as we reflect upon the celebration today that we would be able to rejoice remembering and reflecting on the fullness of what you've called us to all through the same Savior, Jesus Christ. 